Coming down West Ham this afternoon, then? Nah, I don't want to go down there and see them lose again. <laughs> Just a bloody habit, that's all that is. <laughs> it's a bloody habit they've got themselves into, that's all. Yeah, well, it's a bad habit. If you ask me, they ought to change it. Yeah, but I mean, the only place you get down there is watching the other side. Who are they playing any road? Hereford. Walk <laughs> <laughs> Nah, there's nothing worth watching down there this afternoon. If I got a football, I mean, I want to see somebody do something with the ball. But that lot down there, you, know, you wouldn't even know it was their own ground. Some of them don't even know when they've changed ends. <laughs> we play too bloody fair, that's our trouble, mate. <laughs> I ain't been putting a bottle out, I suppose, that's half of it. Bottle? What for? The ref! You're supposed to put a bottle of scotch in his dressing room over your own game. <laughs> <laughs> They all do it. It's an old custom, isn't it? It's bribery. It's not bribery. It's referees' perks, isn't it? Tally man. Oh, blind. I mean, you expect some advantage out of playing at home, don't you? That is why, you see... What, you shut up and listen a minute. Look, that is why, when a referee books a play, he's supposed to write his name down then and there, at the time of the offence. See? When he sees what he's supposed to have seen. Yeah. And if his hand is fair and clear, yeah. see, what well, it stands up. If his hand's all swiggling all over the bloody page, would well, I turn a blind eye? Because the ref ain't supposed to touch that scotch till after the bloody game is over. <laughs> I found they put out a bottle of scotch in his dressing. They do, you yeah, know that's no, true. No, that's no. why it's so bloody hard to win up at Anfield, isn't it? Yeah. That bloody Liverpool manager, what's his name? Yeah. Has his hair cut like mine. <laughs> Shankly, bloody Shankly, he's a jock, and he gets his yeah. booze wholesale, doesn't he? Suppose <laughs> well, he's giving a ref more than his fair quota, isn't he? I've forgotten the insurance. <laughs> bloody game's changing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Suppose we've got to go along with it. Go ahead. Sink our ideals. <laughs> Play like the rest of them, I suppose. <laughs> Ignore the subtleties of the game. Want to get more like Leeds or bloody Liverpool, I suppose. Get more like Leeds and Liverpool? Bloody hell, I wish you would. One thing I miss living in London, you know, me football. Yeah, kick yeah. and rush, mate, up there. That's all that is. Kick and rush. Oh, blimey, ain't so long since they stopped putting a coach down as goalposts, is it? <laughs> yeah. you, you don't have to talk wet, you do. I mean, blimey, we've got Browns up there better than Wembley. I don't know why, you know, they play, don't play more of the internationals up there. Look, mate, it's the people I'm talking about, not the bloody grounds, the people, innit? Because we shout, you mean? No, well, yeah, we we can't you Come on, I've had it. We've got some of the shouts up there yeah. about, mate. We're real people up oh, there, yeah. mate. Yeah, and we're kin to kin. We can trace ourselves back. The monkeys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, be <laughs> beyond that, you know, beyond that. And it's beyond you, isn't it? Because you don't understand that that's our side out there. Our side, our lads, and our side's a great side, yeah, ours, is he? Can you give me 20p? What for? <laughs> Insurance. <laughs> it comes out your bloody housekeeping. <laughs> Listen, Shirley Temple. You to me about kin to kin and yeah. being real people. Yeah. We're real people around here, mate. Yeah, There's right. people around here and trace kin back to Drake and sailing with him. Drake didn't sail from London. Tilbury, it's near enough, isn't it? <laughs> Drake sailed from Plymouth. <laughs> All right, he might have sailed from Plymouth. Nobody's saying he didn't, but he would have preferred to sail from Tilbury, <laughs> wouldn't he? Cos Tilbury's near to London and that's where he wanted to be cos he thought of London as his own town. He only played bowls in Plymouth. Nah, nah, Alex Drake wasn't a Londoner. He was Devonshire, him, lad. All right, clever dick. He might have been born in Devon, see, but he soon moved to London, didn't he? Because he knew, as soon as he see that he had it in him to be a great admiral, he knew that only in London could he realise his true ambitions. They got water at Devon, you know. They I know they Devon. got water in Devon, Mr Clever Dick. There wasn't nothing worth attacking in Devon, was there? Not in them days. Your Spanish wasn't after Devon, was they? Couple of fields and a few bloody shepherds, Christ, I mean... <laughs> they was after London, wasn't it? Because they knew that outside of London, it wasn't nothing worth having, not in them days. It still ain't. Listen, <laughs> listen, mate, there's nothing in London, nothing. All the wealth in England's outside of London, oh, man, yeah. yeah? In the fields, in the coal mines, <laughs> in the rivers, and under the bloody yeah. sea. <laughs> what about the Bank of England, then, eh? <laughs> a, a bloody printing works. You want to know something about inflation and what causes it? It's them printing more of their paper money than we've got goods for in the shops. Here. Oh. <laughs> Here. I've left myself short of the money for his insurance, and I want that to lapse. 
Wayne, shut up. What? Wayne, listen, Sonny. Wayne Drake. Oh. Wait, shut up, will you? Wayne Drake was sailing a main. I know. I won't pay the tally man this week. <laughs> Will you shut up? Look, Wayne Drake was sailing the main, yes. see, the Spanish main. The people of London, they wasn't bothered about coal and little bits of fields. Mm -hmm. No, they let others dig up the treasure and farm the fields, and then Drake and his lads had nick it all from on the high seas. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, Shops nice. of London was full of stuff in them days. I can always be out when he comes again. Uh, <laughs> that was great days, they was. When England was mighty, they ruled the seven seas. And anything found on them was ours, mate. Ours! Yeah, when they hung a man for stealing a sheep. Mm. What? Oh, they had values in them days. They believed in a Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not steal, and if you did, you bloody well got strung up and good job and all. <laughs> I mean, nowadays you get caught stealing. What do they do? They just put you in prison and then keep you at the expense of the rest of us. You... Keep it, and then after a few years, let you out and go off stealing again. You make me sick, you do. A man steals, that's the end of him as far as you're concerned, isn't it? There's no forgiveness, look, no turning over a new leaf, look, nothing. If a man steals and you let him get away with it, before you know we you are, that's a habit, innit? And some habits are bloody hard to break. I wish you'd break some of your habits. <laughs> you're potty, you are. Oh, yeah. You're potty. I mean, one minute you're going on about Drake and singing his praises to Iron Ivan for stealing off the rest of the world. And in the next breath, in the next right. breath, he's putting the Ten Commandments. So... Thou shalt not steal. You're said, so... Anyone caught stealing should be strung up. Well, I guess my You're so bloody thick, you are. I'm <laughs> thick, mate. <laughs> God, you say, I am talking about nicking off your own kind, stealing from your own people. That's what I'm talking well, about. It? Well, you steal off of me. <laughs> Does. Well, somebody had a pound off that money that I put out for the milkman up there. Oh, I gave that to the paper, lad. Oh, did you? Yeah, well, I haven't got any change, have I? Well, I hope you've got some change when the milkman comes. Look, they're not all my papers, you know. No, well, who's are they then? Because I don't read the bloody militant, do I? And what have we got here? The new statesman. New statesman. Wouldn't they have a bloody statesman if they see one? And what comic catch are you <laughs> reading there today? <laughs> What's he got here? Look, morning star. They are. Look at it. Used to be called the Daily Worker, that did, didn't it, right, once yeah, upon yeah. a time? Yeah. Till they found out half the bloody readers never went to work, they was all down the labour stage. Signing on for the bloody dollar, the rest of them was all out on strike, weren't they? Bloody <laughs> socialist rags, mate. Do you what buys them, not me? I don't buy the Express and the Mail, No, do I? but you bloody read them, didn't you? Oh? <laughs> Only to see what lies they're printing. Lies! Oh, <laughs> yeah, lies. lies. It hurts, doesn't it? A bit of the truth, mate. Bloody hurts. Well, I don't have time to read any of them, so I'm not going to pay for them. No, you don't want to read that bloody rubbish he buys. No, look, look at this. Look, look at that. Look, saying that the miners here, the miners have got a fair grouse, and, and, and we ought to pay them more than the rest of us, and uh, because it's, it's special work that they do. What, so it's this? Well, so it is. Yes. What's so bloody special about digging a bit of coal out of the oh. ground, eh? <laughs> so, I mean, anyone can do that. Oh, yes. Even your yes. fuzzy wuzzies in the jungle, they can do that. <laughs> No, you've got to pay them. It's a few coloured bees and a bit of broken glass. I mean, <laughs> bloody, anyone who can learn to use a pick and shovel can dig bloody coal, mate. Okay. Even your mix. Oh, God. <laughs> Here, I bet you wouldn't like to dig it, would you? No. I don't have to dig it, do I? Because I've learned to do other things. Oh, yes. We're above it, of course. Well, actually. And I'll tell you something else. If I had to dig coal, I hope I'd do it a bit more grace than what they're doing it. I, I, I hope I show a bit more loyalty. <laughs> Bit more gratitude to the country what give me the chance to dig coal. Oh, yes. <laughs> Show gratitude. Thank them. Yeah. Kiss their feet. They've been so yeah. kind. Yeah. I mean, they might have given the job to foreigners, mightn't they? Yeah, and they still oh. might. Don't you worry about that. We've got the packies over here now, mate. Armies of them. Yeah. <laughs> Old Enoch wasn't daft bringing them over, and he did. Yeah, so he might, but he's gone off him a bit lately, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, so he might be. Well, it'd been a bloody disappointment to him, hadn't they? Well, he brings them over as cheap labour, and his yeah. daft lot get hold of them, start shoving their heads full of daft ideas about equality, and the next thing you know, they believe in it and they want the same treatment as the rest of us. Well, it's just as well they do, isn't it? Because if they lived the way Enoch and his gang expected them to live, in mud huts outside all your big towns, you'd have soon found yourself competing with them for your job. Me? Yeah, you! Yes. And later you'd have found yourself willing, even eager, to do it for a black man's wage. <laughs> yeah. yeah, see a black man doing my job, yeah. can't you, eh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, blimey, <laughs> yeah. Why not? Why not? Because they ain't got the same cultural background as I've got, isn't it? <laughs> Culture. Yes, culture. What do you know about culture? Yeah. <laughs> he don't even wash his hands before he has his dinner. <laughs> he don't even wash them when he's been to the other place, no? <laughs> the blacks have got more culture in one of their war dances than you've ever seen. Yeah. Here, the only films he'd ever go to was Cowboys. <laughs> when you could get him to go. I mean, most of the time, before he got married and started drinking, he used to stand on street corners with a gang of other louts who thought they looked like film stars. 
I don't know who he thought he looked like. King Kong. <laughs> Shut up, funny guts. That was when he started wearing that Omberg thing that he wears now. That was after he'd seen Clark Gable in a film called San Francisco. <laughs> Clark Gable? It, that's when he started to wear that little tash. Too. <laughs> Clark Gable. Clark Gable hasn't got a big nose like that. <laughs> But he had big ears like him. <laughs> all right, all right. Whoever I look like, whoever I bloody look like, I was all you could get. Oh, dear. Uh, she had her caps at Harry Bellows. His father had a boot shop. Did you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind about our face. He wasn't interested in stooping down to marry you. Not him. Not Harry Bellows. Oh, no fear. He was all fixed up with a girl out of the grocer's shop. He was. Uh, one who worked the bacon slicer. <laughs> <laughs> His father seat at that. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you didn't mind, did you? I mean, you wasn't a snob, was you? You didn't mind marrying this inferior who was turned down by the boot shop son and heir, did you? No, not Clark Gable here. <laughs> oh, come on, I'll take you. You're just what I need for my kitchen. And if you were hard, don't answer back. I might let you sleep in my bed with me. <laughs> <laughs> you care that much for Mum, don't yeah. you? That much. No. Eh? Yes, you do. I've been a good husband, I have. <laughs> good at what? <laughs> <laughs> Bloody blonde punch in a shadow! <laughs> Look, I have provided, I have! Ruth! Yeah, and bare essentials. Oh. Yeah, but none of the love and honour that he agreed to. It takes two, doesn't it? Yeah. I wasn't your first choice. Nor you mine. Yeah. Yeah. But you was head of a lot of them, I'll tell you that. You wasn't the last on my list, not by a long chalk. You was on mine. <laughs> Here I thought you think I was nothing, nothing at all. Well, you wasn't much. <laughs> Look, we was the richest on our road. You wasn't. You lived at the poor end. Shut up. You didn't even have carpets or lino. Bare boards you had. Yeah, you had nothing in your house. Six to a bed they slept and had to stand up to eat their meals. <laughs> his father used to play the penny whistle. <laughs> and he had uncle used to make noises with his mouth. <laughs> I mean, that's about as far as it went. Lucky lies you do tell when you go around telling people that. All right, all right, don't get your neckers in a twist. <laughs> but we're liberals, we don't hold the band's upbringing against it. Upbringing? Ain't you talking about upbringing, you bloody scar skit? <laughs> I mean, I wonder Anfield's always full. They've got no comforts at home up there in Liverpool. We've got a house like this, you know. Have you? Yeah, we've got a bathroom, too, and all. What do you do? Kick the coal in it, then? <laughs> oh. We've got everything you've got, mate. Have you? Yeah. And what about a bloody neighbourhood, then, eh? Ooh, yeah, that bloody neighbourhood, mate. No wonder the IRA don't let any bombs off up there in Liverpool. They know they'll be doing us a favour to play the bloody guitar. I must get a move on. I must go and phone up, find out how Gran is. You not mind about Gran? She on the phone? Oh, blimey, they're putting old age pensions on the phone, ain't it? Marvellous, eh? <laughs> Next thing you know, they'll be putting the unemployed on the phone so they can phone each other up and create more work. No, she hasn't got a phone. Council wouldn't give her one, nor would the assistance people. She didn't ask for one, did she? No, well, you see, this woman in her house downstairs, she don't like her putting her bets on over the phone. Well, she's a bit religious and she thinks that gambling's very sinful, especially a woman. And she's always complaining about grand smoking in her room. God almighty, what's it got to do with her? What grand does in her room? She pays her rent, you know. Yeah, well, grand set fire to the bed twice. <laughs> The last time, she nearly set fire to the house and all. Yeah, she ain't been over here putting her bets on through our phone, has she? No, she pays for the calls what few she has. Yeah, well, that's the trouble, isn't it? Because if she uses that thing like you use it, God knows who she's been speaking to all where. I'd be surprised to get a bloody phone bill in from China or somewhere. Look, she pays for the few digital phone calls she has. There's the fella that puts her bets on. And a friend in Glasgow, that's all. <laughs> a man. Was it? Well, I couldn't hear what went on. She asked me to leave the room, then she shut the door and she kept her voice low. I mean, these walls are not as thin as you might imagine. And I can't use that tumbler like he does when he listens to next door. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, it went on for a long time. There was a lot of laughing and giggling going <laughs> on. Do you know how much it costs to call bloody Glasgow? All right, keep your hair on what you've got. <laughs> She put the right money in. In fact, 
She put a bit more in because I worked it out. You worked it out? How could you work it out? Look, I know what young Michael puts in the box when he phones Liverpool, oh, yeah. so... And what does young Michael put in the box when he phones Liverpool? Yeah, well, uh, I've got to be going there. Uh, <laughs> listen, uh, I'll see you later, love. Ta-da. Ta-da. Just a minute, young Michael. He puts in 2p. 2p? And an extra 1p because it's outside London. <laughs> and I charge Gran another 1p because Glasgow's a bit further than Liverpool. <laughs> See, you might have made a profit after all. <laughs> Bloody silly! Can I have them grand for you now? No. I think I'd better go round there. I'm very worried about her. You're not about worrying about her. What about me? What? About my dinner. It's early kick off at West Ham, okay? I can't lay up about your dinner. I'm going to get my clothes on. Yeah, well, I've got time, I suppose. Um, I'll go round with the mother, eh? to church. They're not the way God wants them, she said. They're too open, she said. <laughs> What's she on about? <laughs> open to anybody, any old Tom, Dick and Harry. <laughs> and she was only, very only woman was my mum. <laughs> She's wondering she ain't sober. <laughs> she's going, I think. Well, she's going to arrive drunk at a sound. I suppose. I suppose she's drunk so much she can't even dream sober now. <laughs> All these uh, bits and pieces of hers. <laughs> she always said we could have them, didn't she? <laughs> she did say. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, it's, it's junk, most of it, isn't it? Oh, it's her bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. I know that. It's, uh... <laughs> yeah. Here's the watch, there. Yeah. See? It's gold, that is. Belong to her husband. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> Take it now, shall I? <laughs> oh, I, mean, I thought, you know, take it before the vultures get here. You know? <laughs> I mean, she wants us to have it. And you know what people are, how greedy they get, you know. I mean, they'd all be claiming friendship if they think there's anything a bit valuable here. I mean, and we are our friends, aren't we? We're the only friends she ever had. We are. See? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hey, what's the look? Goes well with that chain, doesn't it? See? <laughs> look, it's, it's almost the same colour gold, that is, see? See, if I leave it here, I'll leave it on this chain. Well, I mean, it's going to save a lot of arguments, isn't it? Uh, rotten, isn't it, eh? <laughs> Poor old soul. <laughs> see her laying there. <laughs> Makes your heart feel fit to break, doesn't it? All <laughs> <laughs> so the bits and pieces lying here and thinks you never use them again. <laughs> See, that, that geezer up in Glasgow, if he gets wind of anything down here, well, I mean, he's going to come down and try and get his hands on you. You know what the Scots are? I'll believe <laughs> mean grasping sods they are, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, I think, what I think we ought to do, really, is, I mean, anything like a bit valuable here, see, we ought to <laughs> take it before anyone sees it, see? See, here. How about her insurance? Is that paid up? 
don't know. No, because, I mean, if it ain't, then you might try and take all this stuff and sell it and pay for the funeral, see? But, I mean, you know, if there's nothing here, well, what the eye don't see it, you know. What do you think, dear? Oh, look, I'm not touching nothing here until you're sitting on the flowers. Oh, <laughs> I know she said she wanted me mm. to have her bits and pieces. Yeah. Mm. I can't think about anything like mm. that now. Mm. Not yet. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> She's not gone yet. No, no, I, I agree with you. I, I was just mm. thinking of the vultures, that's all. I mean, they get a whisper of anything valuable down here or, you know, some old relation or other. I mean, it's funny how they turn up at moments like this, you know, mm. and they can be very hard mm. and grasping and, and mm. not want to respect her wishes. Mm. And, and, I mean, I'm thinking of her, see? You know, mm. that's who I'm thinking of. And mm. her things not going to mm. who, who she wants them to go to. See? She never said nothing about her watch. Mm. Sure she must, Dave. A watch! <laughs> watch! Oh, see? <laughs> hey, oh, hey, she wants me to have it. <laughs> 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 I think I'd better go and phone the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the watch, Green. Oh. The watch. Here, dear. Here. Here's a TikTok. <laughs> yeah, well. I better be getting off. It's early kick off, Green. <laughs> Keep smiling, dear. <laughs> She's upset. <laughs> I've been robbed. <laughs> While she was laying ill. Oh. A gold watch belonged to my Harry. Oh, the dying woman. She wasn't dying. But I was. <laughs> I mean, that is the lowest that is. I mean, I agree with him, you know. I mean, I think anyone who does that, that's the lowest chick of all that. He'll be put, all, put down. <laughs> And I was going, and there were these two figures just by my bed. <laughs> One of them looked like the Holy Mother herself. <laughs> All kindness and love. But the other one, <laughs> he looked like the devil. He, <laughs> he had the ugliest face I ever seen. <laughs> and he leaned over me, and it saved me. Cos I was willing to go with her, but not with him. <laughs> and I thought, if the Lord's called me and he sent down his holy mother to get me, I'll go. But I ain't going with no devil. <laughs> and he, he touched my watch and he took it up in his hand and all the gold it went. <laughs> He turned it into just an ordinary watch. Look! <laughs> That's his. <laughs> That's your watch. Yeah, well, um, I, 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 you know, I thought, I, I, I see it laying there and I, I thought, you know, um, I'd just look after it for you, Gran. Here, yeah, see. I, I didn't take it, did I? I just you'd see it laying there, and I thought, oh, I don't want to get it stolen, you know. So I thought, well, <laughs> I'm going out of pub. Are <laughs> <laughs> you bloody thief? <laughs> <laughs> These women.